Hey YouTube, what's up? Have you ever seen those huge telephoto lenses used by wildlife photographers, for example? Yeah, those ones. What if we use one, but for street photography? We're going to change our habits. We're going to forget the golden hour at the end of the day to prefer the first hour after sunrise when the sun is low in the sky. It usually gives a very nice contrast. Okay, light done. We're also going to walk in another district of Lyon, Pardieu. It's the business center of the city. It will allow us to have a lot of life, all the people who are going to work. But in addition, the whole area is under construction, so plenty of subjects for our images. Location, done. Yes, today is about street photography, but it's always important to think beforehand about the images you want to get. Brainstorming. I'm going to work on four genres. I want images of structure, of texture, like I always do, images that illustrate urban life, and finally, human elements, people in the city. Planification, done. Gear. What's in my bag 2021? No, I'm kidding. Who cares? But what's in my bag for today's photo shoot? That's interesting. Remember the last street photo vlog? I was at 28-75mm and every once in a while I felt a little bit short. Switching to a telephoto lens opens a new world of possibilities for street photography. Today I'm leaving my Sony at home. I'm going to photograph with the camera I use for filming, the GH5. I've already talked about the fact that I don't like to take pictures with it because of the micro for third format and this will give me the opportunity to explain to you in more detail why. But the advantage is that I have here a 100-300mm equivalent to a 200-600mm. Crazy, right? Micro for third at 600mm, which opens to 4, 5.6. Not sure if we'll be able to get some cool pics, but at least we're gonna explore this comfort zone. Second toy I'm taking with me, beam. I always use a GoPro mounted on the camera hot shoot to make POV shot, and that's got the attention of Insta360, who sent me the One Air, saying, hey mate, you know, we can try this, it's fun too. <laughs> clever guys. You know it's the 360 degree cameras. That's cool, to be honest I was about to buy one to test so <laughs> thanks. So what did they give me? Battery, the thing to record, that's the 360 module that thing, the Leica 1 inch module, I guess it's their top quality optics. What about this? Bullet time effect? Well, we'll see. Come on, let's go. We're not going to follow a chronological order today, but rather the four main themes that I've imposed on myself, and we start with the structure. The goal will be to take advantage of the buildings with their very orderly structural lines, which we will try to associate with the chaotic visual mass of information from the construction sites. I must admit that it's pretty cool to have such a powerful zoom, so light and compact, thanks to the micro for third. The first disadvantage is one of the technical difficulties it will cause. Even if the lens is stabilized, you can feel the slightest hand movement and we will really need a fast shutter speed so as not to mess up the sharpness every time. What's the interest of a telephoto lens apart from being as close as possible, of course? I've already talked about distortion in other videos, but the wider the angle of the focal length, the more the different planes of the image seem to be distanced from each other. With a wide angle, the foreground elements appear wider and closer, while the background seems further away. As the focal length increases, there is a feeling of compression where all the planes seem almost at the same level on the same plane. Here, for example, with a wide angle, the building in the foreground would have been much more imposing, and the building in the background would have seemed so far away that it will not have covered almost the entire image, like here. In addition, the foreground and the background would have been blurred, whereas here the depth of field allows me to cover all the elements. So we have a much less immersive feeling, we are less sucked into the image, but the advantage is that we will be able to build a picture with a much more stronger structure, much more graphic. For example here, where the pencil, like we named this big tower, is not really a foreground element, but it's an integral part of the image guidelines. I like it very much, especially with the little touch of color of the worker in the center. 
look here too on this picture, how the three buildings seem to be on top of each other. What interested me was this time scale where we go from the oldest to the modern. I like this association very much. I also try to play with the blur by putting the focus on the branch. We can play on the depth of field only because this foreground is really very very close to me. Another good image with all these angular elements composed of all these straight lines and where the only curved and random visual references are brought by the living elements, the bird, the lady with her bag and the tree that closes the composition. It could have been problematic to have it positioned here since it is at the entrance of the reading direction, but in fact we enter the image with all this empty space in the sky so it counterbalances. Yeah, that works. To conclude about the lens compression, in fact there is a vocabulary error. This compression does not really exist. Or rather, it has nothing to do with the lens, but it is due to the distance from the subject. You could make a wide-angle picture in a very high definition and zoom in on a very small part of the image, you would have exactly the same result. Well, it doesn't make much difference in the end to know it, but few photographers are aware that it has nothing to do with their lens in the end. During my photo shoots, I like to make some texture pictures just because it can help me to transcribe atmospheres, to create series like carousels on Instagram, for example. The goal is to represent just one element, usually as close as possible to the subject, so it's not just the subject, but the whole picture. Often this results in very abstract images. Here it's a mixture of light, reflection, lines, it's nice. Since the beginning of the video, I like my images, even though I said I didn't really like to shoot with the GH5 and its micro for third. The last time I talked about it, oh, it disturbed you. I tried to explain a little bit. Let's have a technical talk. The camera is used to channel and print the light on a sensitive surface. So the size of this surface has obviously an impact on the rendering of the image. What we call a full frame sensor is a sensor whose size corresponds to what we had before with all 35mm films, namely 24mm by 36 mm. They are larger sensors, but mostly smaller ones. The micro for third is about half this size. This means that we have half the surface area to capture light and therefore less performance in low light. But also with the dynamic range, the ability to transcribe the maximum amount of information between low and high light. That's why for example on the 1R, they have different modules that serve both as a lens and a sensor. They have made a specific one, the 1 inch. 1 inch is the size of the sensor, larger than other action cam in general, and therefore has potentially better performance in terms of luminosity. You also need adapted lenses due to what is called the crop factor. The light that transcribes an image is projected by a circular lens on a rectangular sensor, so there is necessarily a part that will be cut. The smaller the sensor will be, with the same lens, the more cropping will be important. By convention, the focal length of all lenses is given in relation to full-frame cameras. This 50mm is really one on a 24 by 36 camera. On a APS-C, its angle of view will be a 80mm. On a micro for third, it's a 100mm. If you want more explanation, you can go and see my Photography 101 playlist. Be careful though, they were my first videos, they are deeply cringe, I look totally scared by the camera. Hello, this is a lens. Awkward, but there is some good information for you if what I said is still obscure to you and you want to go deeper into the theory. But from a practical point of view, what does that mean? On a photo shoot like this, for example, shooting too early in the morning or too late will become complicated. When the ISO gets too high, the image can degrade very quickly. Whereas with the Sony, I'm not scared every time I push beyond 600. So I'd have to go for light with the shutter speed. Impossible, with a telephoto lens, as we've seen, the slightest movement generates blur. We, you can't expect to go below 1 100 of a second or use a tripod, but I never take one with me and it doesn't correspond to the images I want to make. If necessary, you can try to win a few stops by leaning on poles or other supports, but it's not magic. Okay, so aperture, we are on a f4 5.6. That means I can open at f4 maximum at 100 millimeters, so at 200 millimeters, and maximum at f5.6 at 300 millimeters, equivalent to 600 millimeters. In short, it's all these technical constraints that bug me, but it's not only that. When we finish our textures with these two images, where I try to mix the steel and glass of buildings with the wood of trees. Here by also cutting the image in half with the building who got the same shade as the branches. Well, move on to the fun part with the images of urban life. We're gonna try to capture the city waking up. First images, not truly really interesting, but the accumulation of information and once again, this compression of all the depth levels of the image gives them this very graphic aspect. 
The light changes very quickly at the first hour of the sunrise. We are going to oscillate between these warm and cold tones. I like the idea of having this solitary car, but the row of other cars in the background, plus all those parked on the side, yeah, it doesn't look like the deserted city I was picturing in my mind. Here it's not that bad, we have the Broto train station which dominates the picture, the row of cars and how to make my subject on his scooter visible. Simply by waiting until he's detached from the rest so that he's clearly distinguishable. Same principle here, I waited until he's precisely between the cars. It is clearly established that he is the point of interest of the picture. I also like the color matching. We will try to spot these blue and orange tints everywhere during the session to remain the balance of light that gradually changes from cold to warm. We have the perfect illustration of it here, with this superb contrast with the light of the early morning that hits the buildings and all these shaded parts. The light is superb, it's really nice to shoot in the morning, especially in winter. But my main subject, the streetcar, would have deserved to be a bit more in the illuminated area. I shoot too soon, the front is already in the shadow part. And above all, all these cars here, it's not very pretty. Here it's not bad either, we have a nice frame with these nice guidelines, the row of cars is graphic, we even have space to breathe here, but I don't like the truck. Nice place, we are going to try to do something with the buildings here, but by avoiding making a picture as boring as this one, a good example of what not to do. We are going to try to give a little perspective here by shooting at ground level. It's better, but there's still no point of interest in the image, it doesn't tell anything. And here is the image that could have been really great if I had triggered half a second earlier and had these two people crossing by each other right in the center of my image. But I failed and I didn't have the patience to wait for other passersby. Yeah, well done me! In addition to having a nice atmosphere, we could also think of a religious dimension in this picture, with obviously the word God in the foreground and this large scale that goes up to the sky in the background and overhangs all the human constructions. Wow, that's deep. We are not going to live without making streetcar pictures, right? I like the framing here, it's original, but obviously we are much better here. All these lines, this crash perspective, very graphic and once again, thanks to the telephoto lens. So what if we start to integrate a few people in our images, hmm? a bit of life? I spotted the sun above the train station that gave this night lining. I landed on the other side of the street. I composed between the poles and we're waiting for something to happen. So not like in this picture that we can already forget. I was starting to despair so I started to look at the bus stop, but yeah, it's not necessarily better. And bin, patience often pays off. I love this picture. I'm not going to tell you why, I'll let you make your own analysis, but mostly your own interpretation of what it says here, but yeah, I love it. Before going on to the part I enjoy the most, portraits, people on the street, etc. Let's talk about this thing for a second. Because we agree, I can trash the GoPro now. I'm definitely going to shoot my vlog with it from now on, it's really really cool. If you record your photo shoot in POV, even if you don't publish it anywhere, it's always interesting to watch yourself and see how to improve. It's something that can be useful for you. For me, 360 video is a game changer. It allows me to have a lot of different angles for the editing and much more. If you love action cams, yeah, I would like to say yeah. Yeah, go for it, it's the best. But I don't know if it is, I'm not an expert in that. If you never worked with 360 videos before like me, you're probably thinking, wow, maybe it's complicated to edit. Not at all, whether it's on the computer or directly in the app, it's really easy, you select your videos, you've got a lot of presets to play with, you just have to click. In short, it's made for dumb people like us. But the real question is, what about photographers? That's the most important here. For sports photography, it's awesome, but any kind of picture you need a particular angle in a tight space, you can put the camera anywhere. 360 pictures, there are photographers who do that, why not? I'm not sure it's a genre I'm into, but yeah, it's fun. Actually, it could be an idea for a vlog. If you want to see me try to find ideas to take pictures with this, just leave me a comment. Come on, back in the street. Let's start with the least interesting images, in my opinion. This one, for example. So yes, there are strong lines with a diagonal composition that leads to the straight lines. We have our lady who follows the opposite direction of the arrows at the same level. We have a bit of curves thanks to the branches and finally the sculpture that very nicely takes the forms of our composition, the diagonal and the vertical lines. And yet, well, um, yeah, it really don't thrill me. Ah, sorry, I love the picture. I know, I know, the top of the image is not great, the focus is badly managed, it's blurry. We are in the opposite case of the picture before. Technically very good, but not interesting. Here the technique is not good, but there is such an atmosphere. 
The colors are dull and dirty, the grain of the image due to the lack of luminosity, even the blur on the character. We have a real story here, we are in a movie scene. Ah, sorry, I love it. The whole area is under construction right now, and the workers at work, it's a great subject. As I was saying, I've been working a lot on the colors in this suit. You always have to keep in mind to try to spot colors that match each other. Today it's obvious we're going for teal and orange, and here is the perfect illustration. I love the atmosphere, the load that seemed to wait on his shoulder, his position on the stairs and against the reading direction, the separation with the sunlight hitting the building, yeah it's superb. This is Bob the Builder and we're going to try to have a cool image together. He's making a phone call right now, he's managing his team. Yeah, okay. I love how the foreground element closes the image, mm, sweet. Here we are more in the action. He goes up but he's facing this huge staircase that represents his task. A little more interesting but I'm gonna notice in my friend the tower, which is orange. Mm -hmm. Bim! From now on, Bob no longer suffers but builds the staircase that leads him to the top. We have the color schemes that repeat themselves. We have this opposition between the old and the modern with the staircase and the escalator. Our Bob here is Sisyph and his rock. It's beautiful, it's strong, it's symbolic. Mm, I love this image. Bob is too good a model, we're not going to let him go. I'm going to photograph him from the other side of the street. It's okay, the foreground closes the image well. Here, it's really nice. To be honest with you, when I was shooting, I really liked the tarp here. I thought it looked like a banner, that's why I framed it like this. But in the end, after editing it, nah. But the strength of the image doesn't come from that. Already, of course, there are the diagonal guidelines created by the environment and by Bob. But above all, the symbolic. His bag that bends in the face of modernism as he builds the hall with a sample troll. Ah, oh, I validate this image 100%. Let's leave Bob to his task and let's go for further more intimate portraits. I'm often questioned if I ask for permission from the people I photograph. Most of the time I do, because I like to chat with people. And when it's impossible, I make sure with a little smile that they have seen the lens and that they are aware that I'm taking their picture. Except that, well, I never keep this image and you can see why. It takes away all the spontaneity of the photograph. The image is much better here, isn't it? We have a more interesting story. Nice portrait, I like your look on the side and a very Game of Thrones style. Winter is here. I just wish this guy was just a little bit more to the right and not above our head. The problem with the micro for third is also the depth of field. Obviously the telephoto lens helps with that, we still have a correct blurry background, even if it could be better. Between that and the low light issue, yeah, there is necessarily a technical impact and on the practice itself. But there is also a rendering, a texture that you find only on full frame cameras that I prefer. It's like shooting in medium format, it's amazing, you have a rendering even more. But I don't have the budget, so... Oh, if Hasselbad watches this video... Is the Micro Four Thirds sensor bad? Uh, I think that today's photo shoot shows you the opposite. It's just a different tool that corresponds to certain practice and personal tastes. To prove it to you, it's the seconds of the vlog you prefer, or it's just me, it's possible too. My favorite images of the photo shoots. First of all, a portrait, because you know I like that. I love her style, her glasses, the colors. Yes, the shape here would have been better on the other side, but yeah, well. Perfect image. The symmetry, the character, the colors. Look at the desaturation here, this band of warm tints that cuts the image and the contrast of the turquoise blue band of the sky. Everything is perfect in this image, really. It's visual ASMR. And finally, so, well, I assume it's totally subjective. I took this image in the reflection of a passing bus. It probably won't speak to you, but I feel like I'm in one of those old movies that makes you extremely nostalgic without you understanding why. It's abstract, the few colors sublimate the backlighting. Well, it's completely personal once again, I assume. Yeah, there is a lot of images that I like today, but mostly because I enjoy this shooting. I love getting my head around tinkering with my settings because it wasn't working as usual, or even testing this thing I never tried before. The practice is just as cool as the result, and when it does, getting out of your comfort zone doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. It's just another opportunity to have fun. If you're eager for more street photography, check this one, and I'm also putting the Photography 101 playlist if it can help you with some concept here. See you mate, keep on creating.